Well, welcome back to the Strong Up in the Hips podcast. This is episode number 34. It's been a while since we've been together. Um, obviously, no hips meant to talk about for the past couple of weeks because they've all got the COVID. So um, we're going to have a wee podcast on the hips woman. Um, so before we get into that, Jack, Calvin, how are we doing? I'm all right. Yes, I'm all right as well, thanks. I enjoyed my last two weekends. I've been a bit, I've been a bit flat and boring without hips, mind you. Um, but I've just been pouring about the house and following English football a bit closer. Uh, other than that, mate, just doing away with yourselves. Aye, aye, mate, aye. Um, it's nice to be positive after two weekends in the watching his men's team get beat. So, aye, all good. <laughs> I've been busy with City, so I've not really had much time to focus on anything else. Um, and also so been keeping up with Hertha Berlin. Um, just we hibs it against Bayer Leverkusen actually. I let Bayer Leverkusen score a 90th minute winner. So I equalised so, or something. Well, you always had the hibs at the end, did you? Because hibs it has been behind and cut a winning. <laughs> uh, well, we all know that's no true, is it? Well, it's true, mate. Listen, <laughs> 3 0 down. What was it? 2 1 down in the cup final. Turned out around. Hibs it. Won that one. What was the next one, mate? Uh, 2 0 down at Tiny. We hibs that one as well. We came back to draw 2 2 and beat them in the replay. All right, I've got a better idea. I have to jam <laughs> bottle that then. Ah, there you go. That's better. Yeah, there you go. No style, no bottle. Pal dard die out. Stand all out. Stand all out. Aye, right, well, we'll not get too uh, caught up in uh, who hibs and who harps it over the weekend because uh, there's a lot to talk about hibs women because they uh, they got beat this weekend. But before we get to that, Jack, we'll, we'll take it back to last week, midweek. We were away to Hamilton and uh, we won one now, uh, playing newly promoted Hamilton. Um, what was your thoughts going into that? And I'll come to you as well, Calvin. So, Jack, we'll start with you. What was your thoughts going into that game? I mean, obviously, I was expecting us to win because, you know, Hamilton, they came second in the SWPL2 last season. So, you know, they're the newly promoted team. They didn't come up with the title like Aberdeen did. So, you're going, they are going to be an easier opponent. And I did know that New Douglas Park is a tough place to go because it's not exactly the nicest surface um, in Scotland. And Hibs men have struggled at New Douglas Park before. But... I was still very, very confident that we'd get a big win. So, of course, I made my prediction. I think I said 4-0 Hibs going into that game. So I was really, really confident. And I thought, you know, after that League Cup quarter-final win against Aberdeen, it would just be a nice league game to get back and to get three points and sort of get the confidence up heading into the Glasgow City game. I I agree. I, I think I predicted 5-0 Hibs. Um, so I was a bit overconfident like yourself. But, um, Calvin, what was your thoughts going into that game? Yeah, I think I predicted a 2-0 victory. I'm starting to become a lot more realistic with the, <laughs> the women's team. I think I got off to quite a, um, maybe a false start in a way, seeing them beat uh, Stirling University 10-0. That was, I really thought we were onto something here. I thought, wow, this must be quite, quite, quite the regular occurrence. But actually, uh, I think I think the women's score lines are actually not too far away from the men's. They're quite, quite equal games and they're usually only won by a goal or two. Um, but you two boys are still shooting high but no I'm just keeping my feet on the ground went for a 2-0 prediction which was good as you said newly promoted Hamilton should have swept them aside what like they'd done um, the Wednesday night or something though was it no so it was a bit of an awkward uh, bit of an awkward midweek game there can always be a potential banana skin and we've had a few banana skins this year already um, with the women's team but no job done so can't complain Aye, definitely. Jack, what was your thoughts for when you saw the lineup? I was actually really, really happy with the lineup. It was great to see Tony Malone actually getting a start because I think that she started against Aberdeen as well. In those two games, she's just proved like she's just when you put Tony in, the midfield suddenly a lot more was going through the midfield, and we were looking a lot more lively in midfield. And also partnering up with Shannon McGregor as well was absolutely fantastic. Look, Shannon is an absolute warrior. I've said it so many times and to see her back starting regularly and playing at the level she used to before she'd done her knee, it was fantastic. Um, so I think Tony and Shannon partnered really well in the midfield and it was great to see that partnership because it worked against Aberdeen. He didn't change anything for the Aberdeen game, which I thought was really, really good, um, which is fair play to Dean because I know he chops and changes the team sometimes, but I think it was good that, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, and he kept that in for the Hamilton game and it worked. It worked. Um, I thought the lineup was absolutely fantastic. Spot on for Dean there. No complaints from me. Aye, it was nice to see him uh, rotate the squad a wee bit and gain Emily much a game as well. I think that was a, a big call, obviously, with the, the bigger game. Uh, got the no, no disrespect to Hamilton, but Glasgow City's a bigger game than Hamilton. So 
the rest there, Gabby as well was good. Calvin, what was your thoughts on the lineup? Were you surprised to see the changes? Yeah, not really surprised now nah, because like Jack said, he does chop and change it quite a bit. Um, sometimes I find the teams quite hard to predict. To be honest with you, even with the men's team as well, because I don't think. I think Dean probably knows his strongest eleven, but I think Jack Ross maybe doesn't. He? Um, but for me, sometimes. I don't know. There's there's quite a lot of choice in the women's team. There's quite a lot of players in good positions that are all they're all quite good. So, uh, for me, it's quite hard to predict. But he usually puts out a team that's good enough or decent enough. Um, so I can't really comment much more on it to be honest. Yeah, right. I'd, I'd, I'd like to bring up about Emily. Actually, I forgot to mention that. I think it was great she kept the queen sheet because it'd be very easy for her confidence to be knackered after the Partick Thistle game. Obviously, she had. Mm, not the best game obviously there's that one with the penalty save me and Calvin talked about it at the time where um, she didn't really make an attempt to save the penalty she actually went the other way um, and it was a really sort of weird I don't know what was going on there and she didn't have the best game against Partick so and she came back um, against Hamilton and she was fantastic I mean she didn't have much to do right enough but when she did get called into action she was fantastic and I think that's excellent for her confidence because She's good. She's she knows. I think she knows that she's behind Gabby. She's second choice, but she still wanting to prove herself, which is absolutely fantastic. So fair play to Emily in that game. It was great to see her back to the sort of level we seen from her last season. Uh definitely. Um, I think she's a good keeper. Um, obviously Gabby's pro- number one for a reason. So it's nice to see her coming on and getting that clean sheet. So let's let's talk about the goal then. Um, the goal was a fantastic goal. Um, Amy Muir's ball to. Amy Gallagher was top top quality, and uh, Jack, what was your thoughts on the goal? Fantastic, you know that's that's our bread and butter. That's how we play. But Amy Muir is such a fantastic player, and that's why she's getting in the Scotland squad. She she's amazing, and the awareness there I thought was brilliant. Just she sees Amy Gallagher, she whips the ball in. Amy Gallagher, calm as you like, and I did say it. I did say it on the podcast account as well. If Pedro was watching that game, call her up to the Scotland squad for the Ukraine game. I'm saying that now, call her up to the Scotland squad to the Ukraine game in the qualifiers because she deserves her chance. Even if it's on the bench, Amy Gallagher deserves her chance. She's fantastic. She's a fantastic player, solid 8, 9 out of 10 every week. I don't know how she isn't in the Scotland team already. And it was a fantastic finish from her. You would expect that. And I like the Amy-Amy combination going on there. I love it. And I think Amy is fantastic. I've said it before. It must be something with Hibs and Blonde heated fullbacks. You know, they're just they're really good. She's a really like Josh Doig, but uh, Amy's absolutely fantastic, um, both of them. Both Gallagher and Muir are absolutely fantastic, and I like to see that link up there, but it was a great ball from Amy Muir. Um, I'm not taking the finish away from Amy Gallagher at all, because it was a great finish, but talk about Amy Muir's ball, it was just filth, basically. <laughs> I, I've said this before about Scott Allen's back heel to Boyle in the Livingston game, that was even more filth than that, I think. Just a great looking ball over, Gallagher's there, what more do you want? Absolutely fantastic from us, and that's what we are capable of. In attack, that's how deadly we are in attack. That our fullbacks are pushing up like that, and the wingers busting into the box, and you can get across. And it's brilliant. That was prime Hibs right there. It was absolutely fantastic, and it was great to watch. I definitely agree, Calvin. I'll come to you with the next question. So obviously, it's a very solid three points, um, but we only won one nil. And uh, Dean had said if we'd been more clinical, we could have won eight 0 So what's your what's your thoughts on that? Do you think the Hibs women team? And probably the same can be said for the men as well. Do you think we need to be more clinical in the final third? Um, it's job done. I mean, one nil is job done anyway, so it doesn't really matter. I mean, goal difference might be important in the league in terms of because it's quite tight at the top of the table um, with ourselves, Celtic, Rangers and Glasgow City. But um, it's funny because you said the same thing against it was Aberdeen, right? I'm talking about the 2-0 semi-final win, guys. Uh, sorry, the, the quarter-final win against Aye. Aberdeen. He's with me. I right, said the same Aye. thing at the end of that interview. That was a uh, 2-0 going on 10 as well. We just it was the best we'd played, um, but we just can't only won one nil. Sorry, it was the week before. It was the 17th of October against Aberdeen. Mm-hmm. Um, he felt like we could have had more goals that game as well, but it's the same. I wouldn't really fault the strikers because I actually think we've got quite a lot of good strikers at the Hibs women's team. Um, we all know Alexa Coyle's a good a, a good player, Ken. She's scoring quite a few. Rachel Boyle's popping up with quite a few goals as well in terms of contributing to the team. Um, 
I, I like um, Amy Gallagher, the striker as well. She's good. Uh, so I think there's actually quite a lot of good players in and amongst there. Um, the rub of the green's got to come soon, I guess. What do you guys think, Jack? I think it's just a case of, you know, we just don't get some of our chances. Like I said, it's rubber of the green. You know, it's not a case of we're, we're poor in attack. It's just a case we get the chance we didn't take them. And it's not we're at all like as like that one nil Aberdeen game we're talking about in the league. We were brilliant and we could have scored a lot more, but we just didn't get the rub of the green. So it's got to come and it will come. You know, we've had big school scoring performances, the three nil against Hearts, the four nil against Motherwell, the three nil against Spartans, the ten to two against London United, the ten nil against Sterling Uni. So we've had these big goal scoring performances and we know we're capable of that. And it's not a case of we're stopping ourselves from doing that, like we're being poor in attack. We're not. We're, we're still um, doing well in attack. And another uh, striker I want to mention that Calvin left out there is uh, young Ailey Adams. She's absolutely fantastic as well. You know, 17, um, childhood Hibs fan. Uh, that, she's living the dream. And Ailey's absolutely fantastic. Um, and I think we'll talk about this when we move on to the City game, but I'd love to see her and Alexa partner up top more because they've proved to be a good combination. Playing sort of in that freeze Gallagher to go back out onto the wing where she's a bit more natural. I don't really like it when Gallagher plays central. I think she can play central perfectly fine, but her pace is getting utilised more when she's playing down the flank instead of in that central role. So I would like to see Aileen Alexa partner more, but I think we've got a wealth of attacking threat. We've got so many good attacking players. And against Hamilton, it was literally the same as the two Aberdeen games where we didn't get the rub of the green and it could have easily been 8 or 9 nil with the chances mm. we got. And I think that's brilliant. It just shows how good we really are. And if we can just turn that on and take those chances more, then we will start winning games 8 or 9-0. It'll come, though. It'll come, definitely. It's a confidence thing. And I think, unfortunately, Alexa's went on a bit of a run where she hasn't scored. But that's confidence. And she is a very confident girl and she works hard. We know that. I've said it so many times. She always works hard on the pitch. I just think, you know, she'll need to get her confidence in front of go again. But it'll come because Alexa is absolutely fantastic and the work ethic's there. So if she can get a bit of lady luck on her side, I'm sure Alexa will get back in amongst the goals soon. I just want to touch on that, Jack, with Alexa not scoring um, for a few weeks. Do you think maybe the colder weather? Obviously, that's not an excuse for anything, but coming from America and you're maybe not used to, I don't know what it's like in Montana this time of year, but do you think that could play a, a wee bit of factor into it, potentially? I'm not too sure because um, I think it could because the way the college league went they never played much in this time of year so she won't maybe be used to it the other thing is it's I've noticed it's the opposition she doesn't score against as well if it's a team that's quite a mean defence obviously she's quite tall there's a lot to aim for in terms of height when they snap into the um, tackles and I noticed she struggled with that before um, and that's just the sort of player she is she isn't the sort of player that gets involved in that you know if you have somebody like Ailey Ailey likes to get stuck in and um, try and you know get the ball away for the defenders and she's not afraid to get into a tangle whilst Alexa because of her height it's more awkward for her to get in and amongst that whilst Alexa's more burst into the box get the ball down she's happier when she's sort of free of defenders if you see what I mean yeah. and I think that might be a problem as well but like I said it'll come because she's proven that she can score goals and she's been absolutely fantastic and I think there's more to Alexa's game than scoring goals the way she chases every ball down the way she's communicating with her um, other attacking players in the midfield that's what Alexa brings to the game as well so she's not just a goal scorer she does so much more than that so I, I think but like I said it will come it will come I don't think the weather does play that all of a huge part in it but like she won't be used to playing in these conditions because <laughs> Montana's winters aren't that extreme and they don't play uh, the collegiate football doesn't play usually in the winter they'll have like the odd friendly or something like that but they don't play like their league and their cup fixtures during the winter in the collegiate game in America as far as I know so that's that as well, but I definitely think it's more to do with the opposition. Because you notice she scored against Hearts. Now, just about every time we went forward, their defence parted like the Red Sea um, at Easter Road. And then she scored against Stirling Uni, Kilmarnock, so two SWPL2 sides in the second division. And she scored against Spartans as well, which is a penalty, which penalties is her bread and butter. She's like Martin Boyle when it comes to the penalties. If you, Alexa Coyle steps up to take a penalty, you can, she's scoring. Well, we'll, uh, we'll move on to uh, to yesterday's game. We've uh, spoken about the win. 
Uh, so we'll speak about the defeat now. Um, so we played Glasgow City yesterday. Uh, it was a tough test for Hibs, but games against City, you know, they're always tight. And uh, you pair were confident going into that. Me, not so much. Um, I think I, I predicted 3-1 City, so I was pretty close. Um, obviously, City run out 3-0 three, three winners. Um, so, Jack, I'll start with you again. What was your thoughts on the lineup? Obviously, I think we, we mentioned it uh, in like together that we were disappointed not to see Tony get a start, but what was your thought on the the rest of the team? Yeah, I'll I'll touch on that later with Tony because obviously we have mentioned that. I thought actually I was quite happy. The only thing I would have changed is I would have put Ailey up front with Alexa because I think the front two would have worked better against City because I don't believe in being defensive against these big sides. Spartans when they got the two two draw with Celtic were very very open and didn't play defensively. They were very focused on just attacking Celtic and rattling their cage a bit. I think we were set up defensively. I wasn't complaining at the time, but I thought, you know, it's a solid lineup. Obviously, you've got Gabby and goals, which is a sensible decision for the big games. Um, and I wasn't all that fussed, apart from Tony being left out. And it matched my personal choice that I would have rather seen two strikers. Um, I, I just think... Tony being left out didn't make any sense. Also, Shannon McGregor. I don't know why he left Shannon McGregor out. I can sort of see it with her obviously coming back from injury and the way she busted her knee that you want to protect her. But at the same time, Shannon was, as far as I've seen when she came on off the bench, she was quite lively when she came on. So she obviously wasn't tired and she maybe could have started. And again, like I said, when you had that McGregor-Malone partnership in midfield, it was a lot more sort of intense in the midfield. We were attacking more, we were creating more in the midfield and we were pushing up from midfield and what was going on in midfield and you had those two big creative players, Malone and McGregor, because Tony and McGregor, um, Tony and Shannon sort of move about the midfield. They don't stick in one place. So they could be back covering as a defensive midfielder and the, they could be playing as attacking midfielders or they can go into the central role or they can shift out wide. And I think that's what we needed against Glasgow because it looked to me very narrow in midfield and also very, I don't want to say timid because I think we actually played well in midfield. Um, I think he might have had Leah Eddy sort of in protecting the back four. And I don't really know how we were set up there because we have a lot of multi-positional players in defence. So it's always hard to tell who's going to be in the midfield, who's going to be defensive. Could have possibly been Ellis Notley as well. Um, but I think I, I just wouldn't have set us up with a defensive midfield. I think Leah or, and Ellis both played really well. But Glasgow were overrunning us in midfield, and you could tell. And they've got really top, talented midfielders. And for me, that sort of narrow, compact unit, it'll work against a team like Motherwell or Hearts or even Rangers and Celtic. But the sort of threats that they have in midfield, you can't afford to be like that. You've got to just go at them in midfield. And I think Tony was afraid that, because as I've said on the podcast before, Tony's an absolute tank. You know, she's not afraid to... Um, get stuck in about it in midfield, which is fantastic. I'd compare her a bit to sort of prime Marvin Bartley. You know, he wasn't afraid to get stuck in, but he was also quite creative as well. He was your enforcer, but he's creative when he needs to be. I think Tony's like that. Tony can be an enforcer and she can be creative as well. And that's what we needed against City. But apart from that, I have no complaints about the lineup. I I, am, I agree with what you're saying there, mate. Uh, Calvin, I'll come to you uh, more, more in terms of the game plan in the first half. Obviously, we went down went down 1-0 at halftime. Do you think um, it was a wee bit a negative game plan? Like Jack said, we sat pretty defensive. Do you think that's maybe a negative way to uh, start the game from Dean? Or do you think that was how we needed to start? No, I do think it's negative. I think you need to, I think you're at home, you need to be on the front foot. Like if we want to be serious about competing with the big teams at the top of the table and, um, you know, Sort of solidifying ourselves there as one of the one one of the better better teams, you know. I think we need to do a bit more at home. And for me, I think the fact that as you as Jack and that said it was defensive. Um, I think you need to you need to these teams. I think like Glasgow City and Celtic, and I think you need to go with a high press and not give them much time on the ball because we've actually got a lot of players that could hurt them. Like I feel like we I feel like we sold ourselves short a wee bit. Um, I feel like the girls, like you said, I mean, look at that team. Like they're they're good players. Like the girls, a lot of good, good players. Like Alexa and things like that. I mean, any any half a chance, and the the they know where the net is. Uh, Amy Gallagher as well. I, I really like Amy. I think she's a super player. Um, but yeah, I just feel like we sold ourselves short a bit. I feel like we gave Glasgow City too much respect. 
we should have been almost like the men's team, like a wee bit nastier and just made it be like, try and make Almond feel like a bit of a fortress for us. Um, because I think for me, that's now the third big game that we've slipped up in. And it's already sort of setting the tone as to where, I think, I think to be honest with you, it's already sort of setting the tone as to where, where the girls might end up. Um, you know, very unlucky against Celtic to concede in the last minute. Um, but however, you have to be switched on for 90 minutes against Celtic, and no matter at what level you're playing, everybody knows that. Um, we beat 1 0 at home for Rangers. Rangers have came and took points off us at home. The Glasgow City have now took points off us at home as well. It's like, you know, I feel like yesterday was a chance to sort of right those two previous wrongs against the big team. It's all very well. It's fair beating teams like Aberdeen and Hearts at home, like. Uh, uh, Motherwell, things like that. Like these are expected results, and Hamilton's these are expected. But I feel like you know, too much respect was given to Glasgow City. I feel like we could have been more direct and really took the game to them, um, because we've seen, like Jack, you know, we can we can be quite a high scoring team. We've got a lot of players that can punish uh, and hurt the opposition, and I just think that um, it was an opportunity missed. Really, I felt like it was only. Because because I, I feel like you can even see as you watch the game we had plenty of the ball and we had um, you know we didn't look too bad we lost a few sloppy goals but we didn't actually look too bad in in and out of possession uh, I just feel like if we'd been a little bit more positive we uh, we could have actually took more from the game mm. I d- definitely agree definitely uh, so obviously second half rolls around it's it's one 0 and we come out and. Um, Glasgow City again, better team in the second half, and they score another two goals to finish us off. Um, Jack, I want to touch on the some of the goals that Glasgow City scored yesterday. Um, so it's probably in my for in my opinion the worst performance I've seen for Gabby English in a hip shot. Um, you know the two she could have done better with two of the goals. I would say um, obviously the third one's just a rebound and it goes in. But what um, what do you think of the the goals that we conceded yesterday? I was I was quite disappointed with the first two, to be honest. I think the first goal it was really a bit of hit and hope from City. You know, we were crowding them out and they just wanted to get the ball anywhere that wasn't near our defenders, if you see what I mean. Because we were really like hassling them. And the City player just puts her lace. I think it might have been Chinchilla, um, the Costa Rican. She puts her laces through it. And I don't know, maybe the sun was glinting in Gabby's eye, honestly, because that happens to goalkeepers or what. But she uh, she's from Orlando, mate. I'm not buying that one. <laughs> it's always sunny there. She, I don't know what she saw. Maybe it was Air Force One or whatever, since she's American. But whatever happened, Gabby's really good at getting those, usually. And I don't know, like, she, maybe she was daydreaming or what, but it goes completely... She misjudges it completely, the flight of the ball. It goes over in the back of the net. Now, really, that's a case, a case of... And we actually can see the goal like that against Partick, albeit Emily Much is in goal for that game, but... Actually, a case of there was no threat for that. That was City just wanting to get rid of it because that's Chinchilla going, right, I've got to get rid of this ball somehow. I'm going to have a shot because we were crowding them out. And because um, Gabby maybe wasn't too aware, I, I'm not going to you know, go too heavy on Gabby because she is fantastic. And I think I'm hoping yeah. this was a blip against Glasgow mm-hmm. City because 19 out of 10, Gabby is, and I've said it before, she's one of the best keepers in the league. Outside Lee Alexander and Jenna Fife, I think she's the best keeper in the league. Um, definitely. She just misjudges it and it goes in. 1-0 sitting, I think. You can't have too many complaints of that, apart from Gabby. I think the defence are doing the right thing, trying to crowd City off the ball. And City, like you said, Chinchilla, she took she took it on and it went in. That's just, that's it. I think their second goal, there was a bit of ball watching from us. Uh, definitely. And to be honest, it was... May as well have been Paul Hanlon and Ryan Portress that were in that back line because there was a bit of ball watching going on. City put the ball into the box and, like I said, it was like watching the men's team. Ball into the box and, oh dear, it's in the back of the net. And I was that close to saying, Paul Hanlon, you've done it again. And then I realised, <laughs> oh wait, no, Paul can he play? So, um, uh, it, it was it was a bit of a... I don't know because I, I don't think Shiv saw it. I don't think Shiv saw it. And Joel was too busy marking another city player. So I don't think the two the two centre halves couldn't have seen it. 
That's uh, so in jo- Joel and Shiv's defence, who by the way both had very good games. I'll say both Joel and Shiv had very good games. You know, absolutely solid at the back. But it was it was frustrating because it was like a goal you'd expect the men's team to concede with the way it went into the box. There was no threat. Again, I think Gabby misjudged it, um, and it ends up in the back of the net. And Calvin had a lot to say about that goal as well in the WhatsApp group. So I'll go and pass over to Calvin now. <laughs> Uh, I just seen it and I felt like at 1 0. I think Hibs are still in the game. I think the minute Glasgow City obviously scored their second goal, I think the girls and everyone knew there was no way back for them. Mm. Um, but I felt quietly confident at 1 0. But to lose a goal like that, I just thought was lazy. And the ball into the box for me, <clears throat> everybody's just watching. It's like it's almost like the one that um, Man United conceded at the weekend, you know? Mm. Ball into the box. It was almost, it was a. Uh, I want to say it was a silly. But did, did it come from a free kick? Yeah, I think it did. It did. I think, it did I, I almost, I'm almost saying it was a silly free kick to give away as well. It, I, I what happened? If it's, it's, if it's a free kick, I was thinking about because obviously I was there, but I usually chat away to folk as well. So uh, Jack Gillis out. But uh, <laughs> what what happened was I think there was a bit of a mistake from us, like a slip, and. It could have been Leah or it could have been Ellis that tried to get it back, completely missed the ball and just went through the City player. I know, as I said, mate, it was just a ball in a box like that. For me, we've got big, the, the, the very tall tall girls, you know, um, we could do a bit better with that. But um, now it would be too harsh because they've been decent this year and Glasgow City are a good team, mate. They are a good team. Much as I hate Glasgow and everything to do with Glasgow and every team that comes from Glasgow... They are a good side, um, so I give them their due. But no, nah, I felt like we could have handled that a bit better because, as I said, going into the late stages of that game, still being at 1-0, I feel like we could have had another half chance in us. Um, we could have came away with a, a share of the spoils, but unfortunately it wasn't meant to be, mate. Yeah, I completely agree. And like the third goal, I think it was a brilliant counter. This is the one where I don't think we were at fault. It was a brilliant counter-attack from City. Like that was an excellent. Uh, yeah, game. Mate, like, there was like seven Hibs defenders in the box though. When that, when that, how that goal got in, you're just thinking they're thinking what? I think to me, for seeing it in the stands, I think first of all it was a very good City counter attack. I will say right. that now, um, because you know they got the ball, and at that point I think okay, we're counting about damage limitation, and they just get forward. Excellent counter attack. Gabby, I think actually did well to save the initial effort. It was, I think that was a good save. But Lauren Davidson's left completely unmarked. And like Calvin said, there's seven Hibs players in the box. Lauren Davidson also ex Hybe, which is even more upsetting because I love Lauren when she played for us. I just think she didn't get her chances all that often when she played for us. But she's a fantastic player, Lauren, and she's doing really well for City and um, getting called up to Scotland and everything. So, to be honest, if it had been any other team that scored against us, I would have actually been quite happy to see Lauren doing well, because women's football is not like the men's football, you go, oh, Judas or whatever, you know, you want the players to do well, and I just think, uh, I don't know, I got a bit of, like, coming from Ra- for Rangers vibes for that, you know what I mean, like, I know, I, like, when come dogs at Rangers, I got those vibes when Lauren went to uh, Glasgow City, and I was just like, oh, it's horrible to see her score, but at the same time, oh, well done, Lauren, but I don't know why I left her in mark, because Lauren Davidson's such a talented striker, you know, that if she gets the ball right in front of goal, it's, it's going to end up in the back of the net. It's as simple as that. And I think, I wouldn't even want to say Gabby was mugged off, but she sort of was because she was on the ground after making the initial save. She didn't recover quick enough, but at the same time, there should have been a defender or any other player on the line to clear that. You know, it's not the goalkeeper's responsibility. She's got to get herself up and, you know, if you see what I mean, because she's just made a really difficult save. It looked like a sore one as well because it did collide with the, the City player as well. So she's got to get up. She might have taken a bit of a knock there as well. She's got to get up and try and recover. So there should be a player on the line to clear that. But I don't know. I think there was maybe a bit of miscommunication. There was a scramble for it. And the minute I seen Lauren Davidson take the touch, I thought, that's going in. I said that I was actually I was sitting next to uh, Tracy. And I said, you know what? That's going in the back of the net. Because I just, I just seen it coming, basically. And it was a frustrating one. I, I think that one wasn't as bad as the second goal, but it was still really, really frustrating. As Carl said, there were seven Hibs players in the box. And I, I just... I, I thought that one was worse, Jack, personally, just because I thought they knew they were beat. 
I think so, yeah. I, I think that was... were being, it was a wee bit half assed, to be honest with you. And I thought, oh, God. But in their defence, and I'll, it's, it's no, it usually um, I, I try to not be overly positive. But I think in their defence, like I said, it was just a bit of miscommunication. Also, like I said, to give Gabby a bit of credit, because I know we've not really spoke highly of her uh, today. She did oh, no, make she a good save. Really, I mean, like you said, she's. I mean, she saved that team quite a lot of points. And without her in goals, I definitely think that they're a, they're a poorer team. So we're not saying anything bad about Gabby or that or anything like that. But I didn't want to the final. <laughs> well, as for the, I for the Fred Lord and Davidson scoring, I just think it was a case there was a big miscommunication, and unfortunately, it fell to her. But I, I agree with Calvin. We did look beat at that point. You know, the heads dropped. I think had that been at 1-0, we might have defended that better. But that's not for me to say. And like I said, Joel and Shiv both had fantastic games. Leah Eddy had a fantastic game. So you've just got to go. It's one of those unfortunate things, really. Aye, Aye totally. Well, not our best performance, but uh, we've got a semi-final uh, at the weekend. So we need to dust ourselves down and get ready for that. So just before we look at the semi-final, um, obviously we're that's been uh, we haven't beat any of the Glasgow three in two years. Jack, <clears throat> is that a concern for you? Are we playing for fourth by the looks of things now? I think I'm I'm not going to be too quick to jump to <clears throat> conclusions on that one. I think it is concerning, but at the same time, you've got to look at it that Rangers and Celtic have suddenly just discovered women's football exists and have started pumping loads of money into it. I think how Rangers have done it's quite frankly disgusting. You know, they complain about all their financial problems. And then Jack, they basically bought a team. You. Sorry to interrupt you, mate, but please, us the Rangers. <laughs> <laughs> Save Rangers. Oh, if we're being, Two if we're going to be, gonna be really anal about this, Save Code 2012 be. Limited. The the Rangers. I soon to be the the. <laughs> the the Rangers. Oh, I'm going to call them Save Code 2012 Limited because that's what they legally should be called anyway. So, <laughs> anyway, so Save Code 2012 Limited basically bought a team. It, which, because Rangers weren't all that great within women's football, suddenly they pump millions in it and they basically buy a team, which I think mm-hmm. is wrong, if you ask me, because that's not the right way to do it. You know, we, it took us years to get to how powerful we were within the women's game, developing our own talent. Um, and the same with Glasgow City, to be fair to them, Glasgow City don't have all that much money. It's just they went professional really early on in the game. So, uh, and then Spartans as well, Spartans are built up, and they're not a big club. You know, they're a community club, so fair play yeah. to them as well. But then Celtic, after the Celtic owner said there's no appetite for women's football, suddenly they pump millions in it as well. So mm-hmm. I, I do think it's a case of the Glasgow three have invested, well, not so much City, because City are beginning to get left behind as well. Mm-hmm. I think it's a case of City's just this big powerhouse. They went professional really early on. They've got the best players. They've got internationals playing for Ireland, Costa Rica. So they've got internationals. They had a South African international. She's left now. So they have internationals all over the uh, globe, really. And then Celtic and Rangers just suddenly pump loads of money into it. So I do think that there's that element. But at the same time, Spartans got, like I said, Spartans got a 2-2 draw against Celtic not that long ago. So you've got to look at it. For me, it is concerning, given that we used to beat Rangers and Celtic 8-9-0. And I know those days aren't going to come back because we've got to be realistic about the fact that women's football is a changing game, it's becoming more professional, there is more money in it. At the same time, even when you're, even when we're semi-professional, we can still compete. And I, I think the excuse of we're semi-professional shouldn't fly because I, I'll bring up examples of giant killings and whatever. Eintracht Frankfurt beating Bayern Munich to win the cup. Wigan beating Man City just after the takeover, I'd like to add, winning the cup. So you can do it. You can do it against big teams. So I don't like this, oh, but it's because you're semi-professional. I don't think that should be the case. We shouldn't be scared of professional teams. Because like I said, Rangers and Celtic have bought their success. They're going to are gonna buy the success that they'll inevitably have. Glasgow City are just, it's a case that they went professional early. So I don't get, we can be semi-professional. We've got good players because I think our players are semi-professional in name only. Let's be honest here. You know, players like Amy Gallagher, Colette Kavanagh, they could easily play in a big league. They could easily play in a big league. No, hands down. You know, for example, you could easily see the likes of Amy Gallagher collect having a mid-table WSL club like Man United. Hands down are Brighton. So I don't think this semi-professional argument flies for me at all. It is concerning because you want to do well in Scottish women's football, you need to start playing well against the Glasgow Three. And the club we are, and, you know, I'll say this right now, we should be getting Champions League qualification. That's, that's a simple thing. We're hibs. We should be getting Champions League. 
And I think it is frustrating that we're not doing well. And I'm not saying beat the Glasgow three. It would be nice to beat them, but at least getting draws against them because that'll help those points make the difference of maybe leapfrogging one of them into third because third could be a European place at, or depending on how the coefficients come out and what happens with the cups and everything. So third could be a European place. Third would be fine for me. Third would be absolutely fine because that would give us a hope of getting Champions League. And then again with the Cups, you need to compete with the Glasgow three in the Cups as well. So for me, this whole semi-professional excuse doesn't fly. That does not fly for me at all because we need to just go, we've got the talent, we can compete against them. Mm -hmm. But then I will go to the other side of it and say they have invested a lot of money in it and they've done the usual sleek it old fun thing of basically buying their way to success. And I, like I said, you take Glasgow City out of it, because I will say Glasgow City is genuine. They went professional early and they've been in women's football for a very, very long time and they recruit well. They, Like I said, how many Costa Rican internationals can you say other teams in Scotland have? The closest we get to Costa Rica is some <laughs> tanning salon down Leet or something. So, you know, uh, I think, I, I think you've got to right, look at you're it. Quite right, that mate, you're quite right, mate. You're quite right. No, so that, that's my passionate. That's me getting a bit passionate about that. But <laughs> there's, there's, the there's, women's game's changing, and we've there's got that, to keep up. There's that rant I was waiting on. <laughs> uh, right. Well, let's move on to the semi-final then. Um, we're playing Celtic at Fourth Bank Stadium in Stirling, which is only a ten-minute walk from my house. So I'll probably go along to that. Um, nice to have a game in my neck of the woods for a change. Um, <laughs> so we'll. I will we'll talk about let's let's start with uh, this question here, Jack. Or actually Kim what Calvin, I'll start with you this time because I start with Jack most of the time. Uh, hey, you still got a weird love affair going on, man. <laughs> <laughs> let's not start Jack's there. Always <laughs> with, Jack's always agreeing with you. You always want to first. Right. I'll start with you, Calvin. Here we go. <clears throat> Last meeting that we had with Celtic was uh, close and uh, they obviously scored the injury time winner, like you mentioned earlier on. So what do you think we need to do this time to make put our foot into the final? It's, uh, it's obviously different because there's a wee bit more at stake here, do you know what I mean? But I do think we could do with being a wee bit more positive going forward. Like like I said in my last the last time I spoke on the podcast, I'm just saying I feel like the um the Glasgow City game we obviously sat back and was a bit defensive. I don't think we can really do that. I feel that like we need to take the game to Celtic and we need to I'd rather get beat 3-0 but go it and have a good go at it rather than sit and defend and lose 1-0. Honestly, would I'd rather I'd rather the, the girls go for it because I, I believe in them. I believe they're good enough. I believe they're good enough to beat Celtic. Uh, you know, that was a one we were, you know, we were we were very much in the game, uh, the 1-1 one, one game. Uh, and I think the girls will be hurting from that as well. I think they, I don't think they'll be forgotten that. And after, I think they'll be wanting revenge. So, no, I, I think that what we need to do is we need to get ourselves to the front foot. We need to be positive. We need to get the ball to our best players. Um, we need to get we need to try and take a decent wee crowd through. I think that could make the difference. Uh, you know, get a good crowd to go through there and cheer the girls on. Um, I don't think we need to do anything different. I just, I think we're good enough to beat Glasgow City and beat these uh, uh, Ouija teams. I just think we need to, as I said, just be more positive going forward in that. Like, be confident in ourselves. Like we've said before here, we can get big scorings, we can score goals, we can hurt teams. Like, what are we waiting on? What's what's all the what's all the negativity about? I don't get it. A couple of ba- banana skin against the uh, but who was the banana skin? Is against, it against Partick, the mothers of us, man? Was that? Yeah, Partick. Partick. We lost three two. Partick, Partick, Partick. That's the eye. Sorry, uh, I knew I. Well, can what I mean? But it happens. Football. And um, for me, just honestly, go and get go and uh, go and attack them and be positive. Aye, definitely. Jack, I'll move on to the next question uh, for yourself. Um, so, obviously, Celtic, I'll uh, give the listeners a wee bit of context So how Celtic uh, got to the semi. So, they top Group D consisting of Partick, Thistle, Hearts at Johnston. Didn't they concede a single goal? And then, didn't they concede a, a goal against Rangers in the quarterfinal? So, Jack, do you think we'll do, you think we'll do it this weekend? Obviously, we're playing. We're playing. To, well, we're sorry. We're defending our crown, and you know, if we win it this year, we five in a row, um, halfway to the infamous ten. So, do you think the pressure's on for Dean and the girls? Obviously, this is a, a big thing at stake. Obviously, winning it four years, four times in a row. Yeah, I think I'll start off with the one about winning it, and it's a heart and head one. Heart says yes, but unfortunately, head says no. And I, I really hate that because I'm sure everybody knows that. 
I know a lot of the girls and I talk to them after every game and I, I engage on the social media. A lot of them, like said, know me really, really well and I know them really, really well. And it's just unfortunate to say that. So my heart wants to say, yes, we can. So I'm really hoping that we'll go up there, we'll turn, some, we'll turn something on that's been missing against the big teams and we'll win. But my head says Celtic are a very, very talented team this season and they'll, they'll get the rub of the game. And also there'll be the... Uh, usual refereeing decisions that will go their way as well. So, Because unfortunately, the Glasgow bias exists in women's football as well. And <laughs> I, I have a theory about this. That you've got the usual Rangers and Celtic, but because Glasgow City play in orange, the referees love them even more. But um, you can make of that what you will. <laughs> but I, I think, I definitely think that it's going to be a tough one. And like I said, my heart says we'll win. We'll, we'll show up. We'll turn on what's been missing. And like Calvin said, we'll start playing a bit more positivity against the big teams and we'll win. And it doesn't matter whether it's an extra time or on penalties, we'll win. I think it'll happen, but my head's saying Celtic will show up and they're such a high quality team that we'll play well, but we'll get beat. So it's really, really difficult for me and I never want to predict against Hibs. And like I said, I know the girls so well and that's why I'm going with the heart decision that the girls will show up for it because they will. They want to beat these teams. You know, yeah, Kirsty Morrison was saying before the Glasgow City game, she wants, we're going into that and she wants to win. So I think the mentality is there. It's just a case that we need to start clicking against these big teams and start don't, providing don't something a bit. Don't you think the Glasgow City defeat will spur them on, Jack? I think so. Actually, you know, I think so. To prove here, mate. I think they do have a point to prove because, you know, it's a bit like we <clears> say Jack Ross bottles it in the big games. Well, I think, unfortunately, Dean's getting a bit of that reputation now as well because, obviously, we've not beaten any of the Glasgow three. And I think it's a test for him because this is his first big, 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 big game as a manager because, obviously, last season there was no cup competitions due to COVID. So this is the first time that he's got us to a big stage. And, of course, this is the big one for us. We're defending this. for the. It will be the fifth time. And, like you said, uh, here we go, 10 in a row if we win it this fifth time in a row. But it'll be interesting to see what happens. I do think the pressure's on the team there, but I think he'll handle it. And I'll, I think... There's a lot, and I know folk will know that I'm maybe not his biggest um, advocate at times. But if he wins that, fair play to him, because I think he's, he's going to prove a lot of people wrong. Because right now, I'm very much on the fence about what's going on here. And I do like him as a coach, but do you want that little bit more experience? And I know he works very, very hard. I will say that for him right now. He works really, really hard. And considering it's a semi-professional team, he doesn't see the girls all the time. We don't have regular training sessions. He's got his own stuff going on. It's going to be very, it's very, very difficult. So it's going to be interesting to see what the reaction is from that. But I think we've got it, we've got it in the locker. And then looking at Celtic and their run, I think it's very, very impressive. And obviously they beat Rangers and Rangers are very, very good when they said they put other Rangers <laughs> they, to use the correct terminology. But they um they were very, very good. And I think that was a very entertaining game. So it'd be interesting to see. But I think Celtic might be a bit down in the dumps because Rangers actually beat them. And this has been the first time in about 11 games that Rangers have actually beaten them. So I think Celtic will be down in the dumps. You've got to use that because you lose a derby, as we know in the past, the men's team, losing a derby can set off a chain reaction. So, and I think that we can see that with Celtic and Rangers' men's side. If they lose the old firm, it sets off a chain reaction. Look how bad losing that one old firm it completely knackered Celtic last season. So I yeah. think we can use that, the pain from them losing the old firm to our advantage. So I think it'll be very, very interesting and I'm keeping my car cards close to my chest because I don't want to jinx it either. But what I say for fans coming along, it's only £5. It's only £5 for an adult and £3 for a uh, kid. So get yourself along. Semi-final football. The girls need our support because this is a big, big game. We're looking to retain it. So get yourselves up to Stirling. Why not? Great family weekend out at the football. Oh. We'll be there, so Denny's sitting here as if he didn't want to hear shouting and swearing. <laughs> yeah, I'll not be shouting and swearing. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a uh, decent member of society. I'm a, I'm a reputable... It's in, in my, my city as well, so I'll not be using foul language like that. I'll just be Jack. <laughs> Remind us where the match is taking place, Jack, for those who don't know. So, Fourth Bank Stadium in Stirling, of course, um, that's home to <clears> Stirling <throat> Albion, uh, League Two, since League Two uh, club, so... Um, a lot of people might be familiar for that. We have played them in the League Cup and the men a few times away. So if you don't know how to get to Sterling, then whack it in the sat nav because if you didn't have a sat nav, it's 2021, folks. So um, but I will say, get yourself up there. Maybe if you take a wee detour past Aloha or whatever to get there, it doesn't matter. It's a family weekend. Do it. Get yourself along. £5. £5 for a ticket. 
that's less than a Scottish men's Scottish Cup game and a Scottish League Cup game. So Aye. get yourselves along, folks. Seriously. I, I want as many folk there supporting the team. Aye, there we go. Well, we, right, we'll do quick score prediction. We'll keep it very, very brief. Calvin, score prediction for the game on Sunday. 1 0 Hibs. 1 0 Hibs. I'll go 2 1 Hibs. Jack? 2 1 Hibs. You know what? I'm going to say 1 1 us to win it on penalties. There we go. Very, very positive this week for the three years. Right, so we'll move on to the second last wee bit, and it's the get in the bucket segment. Obviously, he's got the prop. He's got the prop. There he is. There it is. <laughs> he's Hibs AF. Oh, man. <laughs> right, so Calvin, I'm starting with you again, just so you're just so you're clear. I There's no love in here. <laughs> just so you don't know if you're left out. Calvin, yeah. what's going in the bucket? Brackets hat for you this week. Uh, what's going in the bucket for me? Um, people moaning about the Hibs first team when they're not even playing. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've seen a lot of folk on Twitter saying, like, moaning about the first team. They're saying, mate, they're not even playing, eh? Like, take a week off, man. Go and spend time with your kids or take your dog for a walk or something, eh? Like, they sit on Twitter and greet about the team, like, I've came what you see as bad as there and the losing. I've missed them, eh? I have. I've missed it. The weekends only the same. I did came what folk would do like football day, but it's weird, man. Weird, right. weird feeling. No listening to sports sound or sport uh, on a Saturday afternoon, just doing jobs in the house and that. But for me, nah, it's weird, man. Miss it. Uh, folk moaning about the first team and that when they're not even playing. Get a grip. All right. Uh, I was going to say that one, so well, uh, I'll go, I'll go oh, to Jack. I'll and I'll, my, no, 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 you, no, 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 absolutely, you've said it, you have it. Right, Jack, you go You're second, right. and I'll, I'll think of, I'll think of one. So, so for me, what can get in the bucket <laughs> uh, for me is hearts ruining my weekend by making <laughs> me look like an utter idiot because I've, I sat and said to my jambo mate at college, I said to Ellie, I think that Dundee United will have use at Tyne Castle because they did it to us at Easter Road and they're a very, very good team right now and I got made to look very, very stupid so um, that can get in the bucket for me. I'm not going to talk about it too much because uh, the humiliation is too much. <laughs> Aye. Um, I think what's going in the bucket for me is the SPFL trying to force him to play a game three days later when we didn't get the full extent of how many folk have got the, the COVID. That was that's shocking, trying to make us play a game three days later and making folk take time off work for it to get then re-rescheduled again for a couple of weeks' time. So, uh, SPFL getting the bucket. Um, so, there we are. So, last section, um, we'll move into our listener questions. with some beauties this week. Uh, obviously, there's no men's stuff to talk about. So, Jack put out a wee tweet saying, any general uh, questions, we'll answer them. So I'll work from bottom to top because the, the last one's the best one. Um, so the first one comes from Ryan Melville and he says, Derek Radden, first or second spell? First. 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 Aye, definitely. Next. Next. He was overweight when he came back the second time. Next. Aye. He scored, he, although to be, fair, to be fair, in his second spell, he scored a winner at Tynecastle. With first, the number one on as well? With the number one. But aye, second, <clears throat> first spell, 100%. 100%. This feels right. like short bangers here. Like we're, we're, that's what I, that's what we're I thought. Stealing Matt, Matty's going to come for us. Matty's going to be uh, chapping at your door, Charlie. Oh, well. Hey, uh, listeners' questions. We've done, it, we've done it since the start. It's just how ridiculous they are this time. It feels like short bangers. <laughs> right, next one comes from Lewis Connor. He usually asks good uh, women's questions, but uh, <clears throat> no women's question this week. He says, Thoughts on Zamama as a player? For me, one of my favourite ever Hibs players and was a great interview on the High Beat Buzz. I don't know if you boys have listened to it, but I, I listened to Zamama's yeah, interview earlier. Too. Really, really good. Really uh, spoke highly of the club. So what was your thoughts on Zamama as a player? Uh, just to mix things up, Calvin, I'll come to you first. Uh, the Moroccan <laughs> magician absolutely loved him. I thought he was brilliant, man. I really, really, really liked Zamama. I thought him and Benji were just, just brilliant at the club. Um Big game players as well. Always showed up against Celtic and Rangers, and that never had. Uh, they played in a team like good players as well. Like the the two of them get, tend to get forgotten about quite a bit. Stayed with us to win the cup as well. Um, no, I loved them both. Loved them both the bits. I thought they were brilliant. Uh, missed them dearly. Uh, Zamama, what a name! What a chance! 
Huge. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. Aye. Aye, fantastic player. Jack, what was your thoughts on him? I loved him. I think folk might see my reply to the Hibs official tweet that uh, said one of the best players I've seen in my lifetime. <clears throat> I absolutely loved him. I like it. I loved the chat. Oh, Samawa. <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll, um, them, it's, it's me that started uh, Gate 7, Block 7, whatever they've called it. It keeps changing. Change its needs more time than Bruce Jenner. I maybe shouldn't have said that, but, but anyway. <laughs> well, uh, Can you start saying uh, stuff you want me to edit out? Because I'm not sitting here wasting my time editing out. It's gone out there. It's, it's gone, gone out there. there. But, um, here well, it is a strong edit. opinion, isn't it? Gone yeah. along my timeline trying to figure out when you used to have said something you shouldn't have said. Uh, yeah, gone whoa, out there. Oh, I've then he bring Charlie into it now. Well, this week. <laughs> but, um, I, I, no, I loved, I loved Jim Emma, but um, no, absolutely fantastic. Like I said, one of the best I've seen in my life, the Easter Road, the Moroccan magician, simple as that. He was fantastic. Right. And I remember him for his heroics <clears> against Gretna. If you remember that Gretna game, um, his heroics against Gretna was fantastic. He was a fantastic part of that CIS Cup winning team, obviously. And I, I just absolutely love him. I love Benji as well, but I think Zamama, out of the two Moroccans, Zamama was actually my favourite. And he's such a genuine guy. Like, I loved how highly he spoke of the club on the high D buzz. And I think that's something to placate the Hibs Daz. Is that how you, that's how you get the Hibs Daz on side, is saying you love Hibs and it was the favourite club you played for. But, it, it, well, he's, he's a very good man if he says that. Uh, but I absolutely loved him. And you could just tell he's one of those characters. We've had so many characters over the year, and he was a character. Um, Mama, but, yeah, I loved him. Aye, he was a very, very good player. I really liked him. Um, and... I think I, I liked how he said he wish he'd played for Hibs for longer. Um, I wish we had him for longer. Yeah, I, I, wish, I wish that too. Um, so next question comes from Joe, and he says, "Name a first team player, past or present, you reckon you could beat in a fight." Anyone say anyone that says Darren McGregor is lying to themselves? This so, is like short, but this is proper <laughs> short bangers territory now. Aye, uh, um, this is. Uh... Jack, we'll go with you first. I'm going to say George Best because he was an old pisshead when he came to him. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> let's not, we're, not going to, we're going to be honest here. He was fat and old and drunk when he came to him. So it, it wouldn't take much. So I'm, I'm going to go and say George Best. As much as I love him as a player, like I've got to say that because it's the easy option. I was get, I mean, I'm not going to go and say John Blackley or Eric Shade, but I'm a, because I'd probably be dead. So I'm, I'm not going to say anybody like that, but I definitely George Best. Because he was a fat old drunk, so George. and even then I struggle. So we'll, we'll we'll leave it at that. Uh George Best, that's a brilliant answer. Um, Calvin, who? Oh, I'm um, still thinking. I know. Uh, who do I reckon I could take? I could take most of them, eh? Can me? <laughs> Except Daz, I couldn't take Daz. Uh, I reckon. Try think who I've Hanlon seen. would have an extra motivation against you, though, mate. Aye, Hanlon, Hanlon nah. bring the knuckle dusters. Nah, nah, but, nah, but ha- Hanlon won the cup, so he he's a free pass in my mind. Um, that's the only time you'll hear me say that. Um, I think I could probably take Paco Jabi. I think, <laughs> or actually, Ken what? No, no Paco Jabi. Matt Artado. Dockery. Matt Dockery. I would I would love to punch him repeatedly in the pus. Uh, I reckon. I reckon. I, could, I reckon I could take him. Um, this has went downhill very quickly. I, Matt, Matt, Matt Docker, I'll have him. Um, I'll drive down to Tottenham myself and have him now. Uh, anyway, moving on. <laughs> Calvin, who do you reckon you could take in a fight? I'd batter Danny Hamlin easily. <laughs> oh, I, I, I can't say too much about that. that um, how, how, could I forget, employer, but... how could I forget about that? I, Only because I he said he'd come on the podcast and never got back to us. So I, 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 what about Hurtado? Like, what about Ulysses de la Cruz? I quite liked him. Anyway, moving on for that before Jack goes on another rant about how much he hates De La Cruz. I like uh, Grand Hole. Grand Hole's a wrestler now, as you know. Aye, aye. Oh, Cummins, I, I, his wrestling I skills are brilliant. Him, aye. <laughs> aye. Right, second last question comes from Mel Clements. What Hibs youngsters moment was the best? Ross Caldwell scoring versus Hearts, Alex Harris instigating the cup comeback at Falkirk. I'll start this one and say Ross Caldwell scoring against Hearts because it was a winner at Tyne Castle and we never won the cup, so... Alex Harris's one's pretty useless. To, well, we got to the final, but we got beat off Celtic. So I'll say Ross Colwell and uh, Calvin for yourself. That was actually a really hard question because that was probably one of the best games of football I've ever been to. That was probably that that four four, right? Four three. Oh, four three. We brought it back to three three. That was what it was. 
I think I felt every single emotion you could probably feel that day, like from embarrassment to disbelief to disgust to just complete and utter just didn't you want to be a hippie or anything like that? Couldn't you, couldn't I you believe what I was watching to then 3-1 thinking, oh, Christ, well, 3-1, okay, that's just a consolation to 3-2 to, to surely know to 3-3 to thinking, what is going on? <laughs> and then when Griffiths got that ball and hit that, the minute he got you knew it was in, you just thought, this is typical him. Like, they always pick you through the ring or eight. It's never the easy way, man. Um, so that was a very, very special day. My wee sister and that was there, so I enjoyed that one. I, and I'd say that one because I was there, aye. Aye. Jack, for you? Caldwell. Has to yeah. be. Has to be. I mean, it's, it's against them. It, it's against them at Swine Castle, isn't it? You know, it was brilliant. And the, the scenes that day were brilliant as well. You know, the minute that went at the, at the back of the net, they just erupted. It was brilliant, aye. honestly. Aye, Good the memory. Stuff and, Jamie Hamill. Oh, aye, that's true, aye, aye. Um, the fourth team, you... I've got good memories of that as well, don't get me wrong, but it didn't get Pat Fenlin out, so <laughs> I've, got, I've, I've got to say, I mean, I've, this is my <laughs> new thing, is Charlie's got Paul Hanlon, I've got Pat Fenlin. Pat Fenlin, eh? Right. Uh, what a man, Pat Fenlin. La- I think you last... should replace Jack Rock, I'm kidding. Last question is from Edinburgh FM. Or David Bapte to us, good friend of the podcast, and me and Jack sit next to the road. Uh, this is definitely a short bangers question. I might submit it this week. Um, would you rather have a thousand foot Gary O'Connor or one thousand one foot Benjis? <laughs> yes, brilliant. <laughs> right, I'll answer this one first. I would have the however many a oh, thousand one foot Benjis. I'll tell you why because. The chaos they'd cause defences just to be running about like <laughs> brilliant. And then you could get them on, morph them into one big Benji. And that would be even... Br- I, I didn't think that was part of the question though, Jack. I think you've got to keep them Well, uh, that's one tough. Foot he doesn't specify what he wants to say. <laughs> and I, I, I'll, I'll say it the way I want to say it. Listen, <laughs> David, it's not football manager anymore, so no fair <laughs> game for you. Anyway, uh, yeah, no, I think... what the, the, I don't even know. This, this is... This is like the twilight zone here now but um, I'd say Benji because look all these wee Benjis running about it would just cause chaos also he, he was such a wee character Benji that I just absolutely, absolutely loved him so having a thousand of them would be brilliant having a wee pocket sized Benji would be brilliant because I think one by Gary O'Connor you, you've got a lot of problems off the pitch to deal with there and I don't know how the Polish would see he was a bender. How the Polish gonna tackle on a thousand foot Gary O'Connor? Like what, I, what are you I, gonna but, need? But how, what are you how gonna they, need to do? How are they gonna tackle one thousand Benjis? Anyway, Calvin, <laughs> we'll come to you. What would you uh, rather have? I'm going with the one thousand Benjis, one thousand one foot Benjis because they they'd all have a CIS Cup winner's medal and hopefully one oh, of the winners, true, one, right. of, one of the 1,000s would give it to me. Aye. Uh, so I, I'd have that. That's a bit more sensible than what I said, actually. Aye, I, I, I was thinking, uh, I was thinking the Benji as well, just because uh, I, I love Benji more than I loved O'Connor, so I'd rather have 1,000 of them running about Easter Road. Um, but aye, there we are. Listener questions. They were good. I quite enjoyed them. Uh, I really did. Um, Pretty funny. Matty would um, normally apologise, but uh, <laughs> yeah, so, um, it's a very short bangers um, question. I don't, I I I don't worry, Jack. We're not coming for short bangers anytime soon because the uh, the questions are uh, I some of these are are uh, nowhere near short bangers quality. But um, anyway, we'll move on. Uh, so that brings us to the end of episode thirty four. We were meant to have a big uh, a big guest on the podcast, but that's been delayed until next week. Um, I don't think I don't think we can say yet who it is, but oh actually we've already said it on Twitter. Oh, oh, well, Charlie Ron, Banks out. <laughs> Ron Ron Gordon's coming on the podcast and then in the next couple of weeks. We're waiting to have it confirmed for next week. But um I so Ron is coming on. Um so we'll be back for that next Tuesday, I believe. Um, That's one, 15. That's one. So, until, for it. until then, I, Jack, no comments next week, please. Uh, until then, Monahibs.